International. While countries around the world, including the U.S., agreed to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050, but for that to happen, people will have to do a lot more to embrace renewable energy. Now, one way to do that, one way to do that is to switch homes to solar power. But if you're a homeowner, do the benefits actually outweigh the costs? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So to answer that question for us is Josh Hurwitz, a homeowner who switched to solar. He joins us now via Zoom from Norwalk, Connecticut. Good morning to you, Josh. Good morning. Thanks for having me uh, on. So how long have you been on solar and when did you decide to do it? How did you decide to do it? I've wanted to do it for a long time. There's three sort of motivations that made me want to do it. First is I wanted to help the environment who wants to, you know, pollute more. I wanted to save money, which solar can really do. And I also wanted to be a little bit more energy independent. I didn't want to have to depend on the, on the grid when the power is down and things like that. Now, were you hesitant, though, on, on how much it costs initially, about the initial cost? I've been researching it for a long time, it's something that's been on my mind for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you in the last 10 years that the prices for home solar have come down like 90%. And so the, really the time was right a couple years ago. Um, also at the time, there was a thought that the federal tax credits would be phasing out. They've been since renewed. And so I wanted to act fast before they did, but it was really the right time economically and for me personally. Josh, when did you make the switch then, a couple of years ago? Uh, I want to say November 2020. I've had, okay. I've had solar on the roof since then. And so since then, have you been keeping track? What kind of cost comparison are you seeing since you made that switch? Oh, I love it. Let me tell you, monthly, there's about three or four months of the year my, my electric bill is zero. There's about three or four months a year where my electric bill is like 25, 40 bucks, something like that. And there are some heavy duty usage months um, when, the, when the, the days aren't that long and the sun's not that strong, where I still have a solar bill anywhere from 75 to maybe $175, depending if the, you know, the heat's blasting or something like that. But overall, I, I've saved a ton of money. Wow. Yeah, that's Good something we're curious about. I mean, in areas we have more quad cover, what kind of difference would it make? Well, what, what should homeowners really consider if they're trying to make that switch to solar? What, what pointers would you give them? So it, it's really important to find the right installer and to do your research. Um, I used an online, um, uh, like not-for-profit service it's called Energy Sage, and through that you can get six or seven estimates and quotations. And they actually have some counselors. You don't pay a dime; they don't make any money off of you. It's, I think it's to promote solar throughout the country, um, and they help you sift through the, the quotes. I, I have an I have someone I work with who heard about my experience in solar and wanted to do it herself. She did it on her own, showed me the contract afterwards, and I, I thought it looked very funny. I asked her to talk to a counselor about this and go through, and, and that installer was overcharging her by $30,000 over the life of the entire unit, over oh, 20 man. years. Wow. So it's really important to do your work up front, um, get a bunch of quotes, know where the prices come in. I ended up not picking the most expensive nor the least expensive. I went for the middle because I believed in that installer the most. I thought that they had a mission to get solar up, that they weren't just trying to make a buck. Um, and also it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, right? Do you want to be completely energy efficient? Do you want to just help your um, help help your bill out a little bit? I, I wanted to be completely energy as, as energy efficient as possible. The, wow. the last thing I'll say is just know your property. And what I mean by that is that some installations are harder and easier than others. So I have a hard roof, like there's a lot of um, nooks and crannies and gables and things like that. And so I needed an installer who really I trusted to get the work done, and that wasn't going to be the cheapest quote. So if you have an easy one, you know, pick the easiest install. Um, but if you know that there are certain individual characteristics of your house, really weigh your, the quality of your installer the most. And it's a relationship. I've had an ongoing relationship with them. I ask them questions all the time. Um, I'm take, doing another project with them now. So it, it's very exciting. Well, you've uh, definitely sound like you've done your research. Very much so. I appreciate uh, those answers for us because I know a lot of people out there are wondering, is it right for me? Is it not? You know? Absolutely. Josh Hurwitz, thanks for putting some sunlight on this there situation. You know, shining the light Very, on very it. cool. <laughs> very informative. All right, folks, we're coming up on next.